Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and of course, cryptocurrency in general. And we're going to be looking at social statistics. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com, where you'll get access to the charts you're about to see, as well as many others. Let's go ahead and jump in. So I haven't actually shared these charts on my channel before. Um, but in order to highlight, you know, just one more thing that is associated with the website into the cryptoverse.com, I wanted to at least show you some of the social statistics related to cryptocurrency. And, you know, maybe you don't agree that Bitcoin, the price action of Bitcoin is in a bear market, which to me, it, it, it seems more like a bear market at, at the current time. But you could at least look at social statistics and say, well, social statistics are certainly in a bear market. For instance, if we first look at the new weekly YouTube subscribers for some larger cryptocurrency YouTube channels, you can see that there is a huge influx of new subscribers to a lot of the major channels. And, and we ended up going all the way up to approximately 300,000 in one week across a lot of these different channels by the end of, by the, or by the middle of May. And then we dropped all the way down in the summer lull, which we even talked about, like it was going to happen. We even said the summer lull is coming. You know, you might as well, might as well plan for it, might as well prepare for it, take profits in, in, in April and May. And then we came back up. Now, what's interesting, and I, I've made this, I, I've made this claim before, is that from a, from a perspective of, say, a top, the 64K level that occurred back in April of 2021 seems a lot more significant. I mean, that was when a lot more retail were, were actually interested in cryptocurrency. And then since then, we, we had a bounce that took us technically to a higher price. But as we've said before, across a number of, of metrics, not just social statistics, but also looking at a lot of on-chain statistics. If you look at price metric charts, if you look at, say, like the, the relative strength index, all that sort of stuff. The, the high at 69K was actually giving out lower values in terms of how heated it was than we were at 64K. And you can actually see that in terms of the new YouTube subscribers. Now, if you guys remember back in, in August, September, October, and November, we were talking about, uh, about Bitcoin and how there wasn't really a new, new influx of retail subscribers. It was basically just like all of us just you know, buying Bitcoin and, and not really seeing a lot of new people come in and buy it. And you can kind of see that, that, you know, the, the second move here wasn't as significant as, as the first one. And recently we've dropped all the way back down. And, and you can see that again, we, we're sort of just flirting with the bottom of this, of this range right, right now. Now, this is looking at it on, in terms of new YouTube subscribers. We can also look at new YouTube views. So this is another interesting one, I think, that you can look at. And you can see that the number of views also put in a lower high during the November, during the November rally. And then since then, it has actually been declining, okay? You can kind of see that it, it declines for a little bit, and then we, we level off, and then it declines again, and then we level off. And then it's in the middle of, of probably in, in another decline in terms of the actual viewership of a lot of these crypto YouTube channels. So the point is, is, you know, when, when you are going to see some type of change in the market, it would seem likely that, I mean, again, it's dubious speculation, of course, but if, you, if you'd have to imagine Bitcoin finding some equilibrium, where, where the price is no longer feeling so bearish. Like right now, it just seems like every rally gets sold off, right? Every single rally gets sold off, but also retail interest continues to, to go down. So that I think has been reflected in the fact that the price hasn't really been doing so great. And if retail interest continues to go down, then I think that's going to put more downward pressure on the price because there just isn't, there aren't enough people that are, are interested at the current time. And we'd have to wait until you know, until until Bitcoin reaches the level where there there is enough interest to sustain it, even if the viewership is down, and then we would slowly build off of that. You can also look at things like Reddit. Okay, so we we a lot of us are familiar with YouTube because we spend a lot of our lives on it. Um, but if you go look at Reddit, which is probably where I spend the the other half of my life, 
um, whoever whoever is on Reddit on their computer, and then they said to go to sleep, and they go they go to their bed, and then they just pull up their phone, and go <laughs> go to Reddit.com. Um, but anyways, if you look at new crypto subreddit subscribers to various cryptocurrency subreddits, you will see that this one we saw, and this goes all the way back. You can see there was a, a peak here in 2017, and then again another major peak in early 2021. So again, this is another metric showing that. This, the fact that we put in a higher high in November is is actually remarkable considering how how little interest there was compared to what we had previously seen. And then since then, it, it's more or less, I mean, it, it had been in a downtrend right now, it seems to have leveled off some. If you go look at Reddit posts, okay, so people posting on Reddit, you see the same type of stuff, but it's been in a pretty fierce downtrend ever, really ever since May of, or April, really since April or May of 2021, you can see that this has been in a fairly fierce downtrend. And so there are certainly people that are, are losing interest in the short term. Eventually, I imagine it'll level out. Perhaps it'll level out around somewhere where these levels were. So per, perhaps it'll level out where we currently are. Um, and then we'll and then we'll, we'll we'll try to figure out you know if we can if we can build out a base in terms of where, wherever the price is by the time we level up. But it does look like we're getting back down to sort of the background levels, okay? And and the background levels for for say new subreddit posts among the subreddits that we're tracking end up being approximately you know maybe two thousand um, a week, right? Two thousand Reddit or posts on Reddit a week across these various subreddits, and you can see we are coming back down to those levels probably within the next you know, three to five months, okay? And that's sort of like your background, your, your, your background noise, where of course there's always gonna be some people that are interested, like I'm gonna keep making videos, some of you will continue watching them, um, and, and some people will still, still browse Reddit. If you look at Reddit comments, this one's also been in a pretty ferocious downtrend, and it is starting to level off a little bit um, at, the, you know, at the current levels, which is still significantly higher than where we were back in 2019. I would like to think that every time we, we go through another mania phase and then come back down, the, the, the baseline level activity should be a little bit higher than it was in the past because there's just there's more people that are interested. Now, if you go look at Twitter, you can go look at followers of popular Twitter accounts. Uh, these are you know people, people like me who post on Twitter. Uh, a lot of these a lot of these people actually have much bigger Twitter accounts than I do. But this one's actually somewhat interesting because on Twitter, you can see that we actually saw an influx at November that sort of topped out what we were able to accomplish back in back in May. And I mean, there, of course, there are a number of reasons for that. Um, but one of them is, is you know, there, you can see there's a lot of orange, right? There's a lot of orange right here uh, that, that sort of elevated this. And, and that was, and I've had them on the channel before, that was, I, I believe you can see how Plan, plan B uh, just received a ton of new followers during that time. And when you, when you show them all, you can see kind of it, it really elevated um, everything else. I mean, also these other accounts as well are elevated too, um, but there's certainly a lot of orange right here that sort of elevated everything. And, and I, I mean, I think a lot of that was, was due to the, the floor model that was tracking relatively well. Um, the first three months of that model performed almost to perfection, right? I mean, the first two were perfection. The third was almost perfection. And then the fourth and fifth, obviously, they didn't hit the mark. But still, as far as as far as short-term price predictions go, to get to get three monthly closes on the money it, it was pretty good. And, and you can actually see there's a huge influx of, of followers to, to Plan B's Twitter account. Um, during that time, okay, and and I, I think these are they're interesting trends to say like if we're seeing some type of major spike like this, probably I, I mean if history is any indication, these major spikes tend to mean that the price is going to go down for a while, okay. Like you can see it happened in May. I mean it, it might be a slightly lagging indicator, but it still would have signified that we still had some downward ways to go. And then again here, you know, back over here in in November. Um, we've, we've been more or less moving down ever since with technically we have been putting in higher lows. So I'm not trying to take that away from you. Hopefully Bitcoin continues to put in higher lows, but we also know that eventually, you know, I don't know, I mean, when it'll occur, but at some point we'll probably put in a lower low and, and the structure of the market will, will change. But until then, um, you know, the, the market conditions are still somewhat similar. This is new Twitter followers to exchanges. Now, why is this one interesting? I think this one's interesting because 
it kind of shows if people are actually going to the exchange to buy, right? Like if they're actually interested. And you can see there's a huge influx over here leading into this rally, right? A huge influx. And <coughs> it was going up during this time, right? Going up. And then we had the summer lull where a lot of people didn't subscribe. And then going into November, another influx. But since then, we haven't seen that. So I don't know that this move here, this hasn't really brought a new influx of people. I still think we, we have a bit more time that we have to wait here before we're gonna before we're gonna see things rally again. But what you will notice is that compared to what we accomplished back over here, again, there were some, you know, there were fewer exchanges, but a lot more people, a lot more people came in. And, and my guess is that, you know, the background, the background noise will be higher than whatever this background noise was, okay, for you know, building up to a new, a new mania phase. If you go look at new Twitter followers to say various layer ones, this is what you get. And I really like this chart because it, it can really help you isolate between say one project and another. For instance, let's suppose you just go, you wanna go follow, um, I don't know, Cardano. You can see what, what, how many new Twitter followers is Cardano getting, right? If you wanna go follow Phantom, you can go follow Phantom. If you want to go follow Polkadot, you can do that. Solana, right? Terra. This has been the best one recently. I mean, it's been holding up, holding up about the best. And this is actually showing the price of Bitcoin in the background. But the nice thing is you can actually switch this over and, and actually look at the, the price of the cryptocurrency you're interested in overlaid with new Twitter followers to, to those exchange accounts. Okay. So just another, another metric that I, I think is useful. By the way, we're not going to show these metrics that often on the channel. Um, I would say, you know, this is not going to be something that you're going to see for a long, long time because I, I, I want to make sure that the people that, that are, are signed up for IntoTheCryptoverse.com, they have access and we're not just showing it. But I do want to alert you to, to what we do have so that, you can, um, so that you can figure out if you want to, if you want to sign up. You can see a, a spike recently. Uh, in in Twitter followers to layer ones. Um, so if you just sort of look over here, you can see that it, it is spiked in April. Okay. Um, but remember, if we go look at say monthly, we're still we're still looking at sort of a downtrend until proven otherwise. So you know, my, my guess is that we still have some time to go because again, if you think back to most summer months, not all summer months, but a lot of summer months tend to be somewhat dull in crypto because people are doing things like going outside for whatever reason. And, and when people go outside, they spend less time in front of the computer. And if they spend less time in front of the computer, then obviously they're not going to be, they're not going to be following Twitter, uh, layer one, ex ex or layer one accounts as quite as much. And I, I'm joking about going outside. I, I do think it'd be a good idea for everyone to, to enjoy their summer, um, and not just stare at the charts all summer. If you go look at, at Twitter tweets and see the, the frequency that some of your favorite analysts are tweeting during various times, you can go look at that as well, right? So, you know, I think looking at this stuff is very useful. You can also go look at Wikipedia page views, which is a little bit uh, dubious, right? I mean, who, who's going to really judge it based on, on what Wikipedia is doing? But it does give a fairly uh, nice signal, right? This one was right on time. This one was a little bit late, right? It was a little bit late. But it was building into that phase, you know, at around 58k or so, right before the main drop happened. And this one was a spike here at, at 42k before we came down for a little bit. So this, I think, and by the way, we also saw another spike at this local top in March of 2020, or in yeah, like just a, a few weeks ago in March of 2022, when just before Bitcoin Miami, we had a, a, a move up to $48,000 Bitcoin, and then that also marked a local top. So. These charts, when I when I say social media charts on my on my channel, and I say according to social statistics, etc., you know what I'm talking about now, right? You know what I'm talking about. In addition to the social media stuff, we have NFT charts, which also have some social media and some on-chain stuff. We have derivative charts, we have on-chain charts, supply charts, addresses charts, valuation charts, transaction charts, mining charts, risk charts, historical risk levels logarithmic regression charts, return on investment charts, moving averages, which are kind of humdrum, right? And then other. A lot of stuff. Make sure you guys check it out into thecryptoverse.com. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you're not subscribed, give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Bye.